Eggs Putter, used by Walter Hagen to win the 1924 PGA Championship right here on the Donald Ross course at French Lick Resort. The rest of this clubhouse, you're immersed in the history and you'll see a lot more when we go to the rest of the French Lick Resort where the tradition continues. Plus, new history is being created here at the Pete Dye course at French Lick Resort, a course that opened in 2009 to tremendous fanfare, rated the number one new golf course in America, and a course that keeps getting better as championships are played on this tough layout. The Senior LPGA Championship, just one of a number of events held here. This challenging course is turned over the best lady golfers who ever played the game the rest of the year. It's all there for us hackers to take our best shot at the Pete Dye course right here at French Lick Resort. Catch it on this episode of The Traveling Golfer. Golf has been around at French Lick Resort since 1907. Director of Golf Dave Harner has not been around that long. However, he has been here to see the explosion that took place with the construction of the Pete Dye course. And now, professional golf and all the excitement it brings. Dave, you've been through exciting times here. I have. I, I've got to see this thing rise out of the, the ashes as far as the resort's concerned and then the, the, the Pete Dye construction in 2006 just put the icing on the cake as far as the golf is concerned. I don't want to say that that brought national attention here because there was a major championship at the old Donald Ross course back in the 20s, but it rekindled national attention. You now mention French Lick and they go, that's that place with that course. And that's what they're talking about right here. Exactly. In 2015, uh, we had the Senior PGA. Now for the LPGA Senior Championship, the Pete Dye course sits here at 800 feet above sea level on Mount Airy. And it certainly is airy all of the time here. Uh, this was really a marvel to construct. The first time I walked this piece of property with Pete Dye, he told us it was impossible to build a golf course up here. And as Pete always liked to say, and he damn near proved it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but he moved a lot of dirt. Uh, we think two to three million cubic yards of dirt. Uh, just a massive project that you'd have to say turned out. If you stand on any green or any tee here at any time, you can see 20 to 30 miles, maybe even 40 miles on a clear day. And it, uh, you know, you really don't even have to play golf when you come up here just to see the sights and look out over the countryside. It's pretty spectacular. Now, this course that Pete Dye constructed with certain thoughts in mind may or may not have been with a professional event. How did you prepare for this? You've got to get this place ready for a tournament. The thing about this golf course is, is we're, you know, we know that we're a high-end, fairly exclusive golf experience and we know that we have to maintain a very, very good condition. So as far as conditioning for the golf tournament, any day you play this golf course that it's open, you're gonna play in the same conditions that they're playing in right now. So the biggest part of the preparation is moving people, where you park the volunteers, where you park the spectators, the broadcast people, where you park the EMTs, the transportation, how do you set up the, the tents and the, the hospitality and those sort of things to make it convenient for the people who are here and the sponsors, but also to make it easy to view golf. So that's what we've tried to do. I'm in the volcano. And unfortunately, I was sacrificed to these volcanoes a few other times when I played here. Pete Dye course, Russ Apple, superintendent, and Russ, challenging is an understatement, and these volcanoes are really so much visual intimidation when you look at them, and then when you get in them, they're intimidating too. Very much so. Yeah, quite an interesting little feature of this golf course. 
that you get from from both sides of the hole as you're playing either two or three and it's just a visual statement. There are a lot of different features on the golf course that Pete Dye put in here to add a little bit of interest, add more character to the holes as if you need a character on top of a mountain. A major part of the challenge is the green complexes that make putting so difficult at uh, the Dye course. Tell us a little bit about those complexes. I think one of the biggest challenges is the visual cues that you get from from some of these long sight lines. Some people think that the green may break one way and they don't trust what they're actually looking at. Uh, another thing is there's a lot of subtle movement on most of the greens. Almost. It helps a little bit to have some inside knowledge on greens this undulated and also on the side of hills. That's what brings the factor in of not knowing which way it's really going to break. Some surprises might take me 100, 200 rounds here before I get the greens <laughs> down right. One of the things that Pete Dye designed here at this golf course was, was options for multiple golfers, any, any uh, level of skill. So the lower handicap golfer can try to really go for the pin, but the higher handicap golfer, if they pick the right spot, miss their shot or lay up, we, we try to shave the approaches and greens complexes down to allow for lower bump and run shots or even long putts. It may not make it easy, but at least that is a, a good option. Now it's time for the Stracoline putt of the day. Whether it's the Donald Ross course or the Pete Dye course, the Stracoline guide is the only way to take some of the fierceness out of these greens. And another nice thing for somebody who comes to these championships is that they can watch as much golf as they want. They can still play as much as they want. Less than two miles away. And the Ross, you know, is a, is a test of golf in itself. It's, it's not an easy golf course. It's uh, stood the test of time. And of course, let's not forget, you did play a PGA championship there. We did, and two LPGAs, 1959-1960. The PGA championship had a rather famous winner. Mr. Hagen. Yeah, Walter Hagen and you have his artifacts on display in the clubhouse right, right. at the Ross course. You know, to come here and play this beautiful course with all the, the views, I mean, every hole, you're just looking out over this majestic beauty. And then to go down and, and play the Donald Ross course, which is more of an old traditional golf course. And we all know Donald Ross is brilliant in his design. It really is a great destination for golfers. The Ross course is great. and They brought it back to its original design and they found the, the blueprints of the original um, course in the vault of the bank not that long ago when they had the money to redo it. So it's really great to be able to play the course as it was designed. It, it doesn't look as difficult maybe as this one does, but it's a real test. It's a delight to play. And as if all that golf's not enough, there's even one more nine hole course right by French Lick Hotel. It's actually our oldest course, Tony. It uh, was built in 1907. It was an 18 hole golf course for many years. And when we expanded the hotel and casino and parking garage, we lost nine holes there. But still, it's a nice little challenge. It's a scenic course, it plays up the long valley adjacent to the resort. And along with that, we have a very state of the art practice facility as well as an indoor facility, club fitting, we have academy. That's a lot of action on a small nine hole course. And you know, we, we, we were still looking for ways to improve the family experience, the group experience. So we got with the folks from the USFL, United States Foot Golf League. Ah. And uh, created a foot golf course within the golf course and golf and foot golf can coexist on the same nine holes and uh, no issue. So families, groups, they, are, they love to take advantage of the foot golf. It's no stress, no lessons, no equipment. You and the ball. So it's, it's pretty neat. The last major championship of the year, the LPGA Senior Championship. Wide open spaces, a lot of room, no gallery ropes. People can actually walk right along with the players. What an experience. It's great. We've been doing this tournament in some form for seven years. We started off with the Legends Tour. You know, in this business, you don't get a lot of chance to be first at anything. But we had the opportunity to be the first major championship for senior women. So that Legends Tour Championship just evolved into the Senior LPGA Championship in 17. So, 
you know, a lot of experience in hosting events. I think we've had about 10 championship events here since we opened in 09. So we learn a lot. Every time we do one of these, we learn something about how we make it better. It's not politically correct to call women dames nowadays, but in the case of Dame Laura Davies, she earned that title and she gave us her thoughts on playing in this senior LPGA championship. I've never had a coach, so my swing is my swing. I've never had anyone messing with it or trying to make me do something different. A lot of people have said if I'd had a coach, I might have won more tournaments. Well, if I'd had a coach, I might have won no tournaments. So you just don't know. I've, I've done okay with my game, and that's why I've stuck to it. Around a golf course that I actually don't feel that comfortable on. I mean, I like it. I think it's a some place, French League, you know, what a place it is. But it's one of those courses that you don't feel comfortable on. So, yeah, that was a bit of a special winner for me. You've got areas of the golf course that can really punish you, and it, you're always on your method. There's a few drives out there you can get away with, but on the whole, if you miss your drive in the wrong spot, you're going to struggle. You got to drive the ball well, and you got you to hit some good iron shots. You know, the wind's going to be up, so it, it plays a little tricky out there. It's not an easy golf course. Every win's very, very special. The first time I got here, I loved it. I, I, I stood up the top there, looking down onto the practice ground and all over. The views are just spectacular. Uh, aesthetically, it's just gorgeous, and I love that sort of golf course where you look and everything's manicured to perfection. So from the first day I got here, I thought, I'm going to love this. Uh, and I did. You know, I played... Actually, you know, the first year I played pretty rubbish, to be fair. I think I finished 10th, and I played... First round was horrendous. So my first experience, I think I had 82. So it took a little while to get used to it, but you've got to drive the ball well. And in general, I'm a good driver of the golf ball. Not particularly long, but fairly straight, and that gives you a lot of opportunities. Like I say, I just, it just suits my eye. We had a meeting last night and uh, Jane Geddes, who's now sort of the, the head of the tour, if you like, um, was saying how lucky we all were to play in the era that we played in, and she's so right. I mean, these you've know, you got Hall of Famers coming out your ears, basically, here. It's, uh, uh, and those are the, the people that I grew up playing with and had, you know, such huge admiration for. And everybody's still very, you know, they're, they're, they're chatty, supportive. Um, everybody still has that burning desire to win. It's fabulous. It's way more serious, but in a really good way. For the LPGA Senior Championship, I think there's a smaller group of women that are probably favored to win. It's 45 and over, so the 45-year-olds are a lot stronger and probably have played competitively much more recently than some of the rest of us. When you first come here, you think, oh my gosh, where am I going to go? Where am I going to hit this? You learn a little bit where you can miss it and where you can't miss it. That's probably the biggest advantage when um, you've played this golf course more. It, it helps you with where you can miss it. But it's a great golf course. You know when you can be a little aggressive and when you can't. But it is quite a challenge for those of us who are, that are kind of really retired now. And this we don't do week in and week out. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. I know I'm supposed to be talking to my guests, but I can't take my eyes off this Vista Pete Dye course at French Lick Resort. It's just amazing to me, and I'm sure it's pretty amazing to this guy here as we sit at the top of the world. Top of the morning to you, Tony. I figured you'd say that. Absolutely. Brendan Sweeney, the director of Golf Media Relations and Player Development here at French Lick. And Brendan, this has been a wild ride for you ever since this course debuted as the best new course in America. Since 2009, we've had a pretty good run. We've hosted about 14 different championships. And all of that has fit in with the amazing explosion and rebirth of French Lick Resort. French Lick is a, is a great destination for a lot of different reasons. Um, I actually grew up in Southern Illinois and, and my parents brought me here when I was a little girl. And uh, it was so much fun to come back and to see what they've done with the place is just tremendous and so much fun. And, and my husband and I have brought our kids here a few times and every time I come back to play, they want to come with me. There's horse riding. My husband took our daughter horseback riding. We played foot golf. I snuck to the casino maybe a couple times. There's so many things to do and I love just walking walking around both of the, the hotels and looking at all the old pictures and all the history that they have here. 
it's really come a long way. Actually, I was just at the French Lick Museum, which is located in downtown French Lick. And at one point, there were 53 casinos in this area. We had nine trains a day coming down from Chicago and continued on throughout the United States. Famous people such as Al Capone, Abbott and Costello. Right behind us is the Taggart Mansion located on top of Mount Airy where the Pete Dye Golf Course is. In 1931, we hosted the Democratic National Convention of Governors. And that year, FDR declared his presidency right here. At the resort, we have over 13 different eateries, starting from pizza, located in Pluto's Alley, the Colonnade Grand Buffet, which we had breakfast, 1875 Steakhouse, and then we That's go- That's a world-class World-class, A number one. Now we go over some eating over at the West Baden Springs Hotel. We have Ballard's in the lobby of the, of the atrium. We have Sinclair's, which is a five-star dining experience. At one time, the mineral springs of French Lick and West Baden were world renowned. Due to the sulfur content in the water, people would come down and take a lithium bath. We have two world-class spas, which are ranked very high in the Condé Nast list of nicest spas in America and even the world. You really see the nostalgia theme everywhere. And you look at multi-generations. We have a lot of family reunions. We have Dixieland bands playing on the weekends. You know, it's a sleepy town in the middle of nowhere. You drive miles and miles and then there's this little metropolis and great golf courses really friendly people i think that's one of the things all the players have said that we're well so welcome wherever we go whether we go up to the other course for dinner or in town in denny's everyone's just so friendly and it's a very welcoming place and that's why i keep coming back when we started here we had 373 employees in a town of 2500 and now we employ 1700 people wow. all due to the renovation and to the vision that the cook group had of rebuilding southern indiana the golf and with the casino and our new online sports book. That's an amazing history and of course like many things it fell on hard times. Yes. And then what a redevelopment including the rebirth of the famous West Baden Hotel right down the street. Part of the property a totally different flavor though. Yes we have two hotels on property one being the West Baden Springs Hotel which was the eighth wonder of the world. It has a rotunda in there that you just see people all day, every day taking pictures. Yeah, it was the world's largest freestanding dome from 1901 to 1963 when they built the Houston Astrodome. It's a full acre of vastness. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, 242 rooms over there. And then on the other side of the property, we have the, the French Lick Hotel with 648 rooms and we were just opened our new casino hotel, which has 71 hotel rooms, bringing us close to 640 rooms total on the property. We have a rich history of baseball here in the town as well. 1907, 1908, Chicago Cubs had their spring training here. Baseball, gambling, golf, it's all here right in French Lick, this little sleepy town that for many years, a lot of people only knew as the birthplace of a basketball player, Larry Bird. Of course, a big part of that community attachment is the attachment to Riley's Children's Hospital. We've been together with Riley's for, for years now and with the Senior LPGA Championship, we've raised over a million dollars to give to the kids. And it's great, BJ and Braden, the two of our ambassadors for Riley's, we've seen these young children grow up to be young men and seen the benefits of what Riley had to offer. One of the benefits of having the Riley kids here on campus during the Senior LPGA Championship is that they are honorary starters. So from Bethesda, Maryland, put your hands together for Kim Williams. So all the senior ladies have a kid, a Riley kid, reading off their name and where they're from. A child labor, but it's a good style of child labor as they interact with the players here at French Lick Resort. Such an enormous piece of property, 3,500 acres. Yep, we we'll always have room for you at French Lick Resort. This brings us to the final stop on our tour of historic French Lick and the French Lick Resort, the Legends Hall of Fame, where they pay tribute to the many players who made history on these golf courses from the time of the 1959-1960 LPGA Championship to the present day tournaments where history is still being made. I hope you enjoyed this. We hope you enjoy the sweep of time from the past to the present in French Lick 
and we hope to see you somewhere else along the golf trail with the Traveling Golfer. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Tour Edge is the official equipment sponsor of the Traveling Golfer.